Today, we're going to learn more about the history behind the 1963 movie, Cleopatra. The classic film is a cinematic masterpiece that was one of the final movies in the 30-plus year career by legendary writer and director Joseph Mankiewicz. It was nominated for nine Oscars, coming home with four in the categories of Best Effects, Special Visual Effects, Best Costume Design for Color Films, Best Art Direction and Set Decoration for Color Films, and last, but certainly not least, Best Cinematography for Color Films. There are a ton of stories that circle around Cleopatra. Of course, there's the classic play written by William Shakespeare about Mark Antony and Cleopatra. There's the 1934 film by Cecil B. DeMille that won an Oscar of its own and was considered the epic film on the topic up until the 1963 movie was made. Today, I'm honored to be joined by one of the world's most renowned Egyptologists. And if you're into the history of ancient Egypt you probably already know who it is that I'm talking about. Dr. Zahi Hawass has been at the forefront of Egyptian archaeology for most of his career. He's taught Egyptian archaeology and history at the American University in Cairo. He was the chief inspector at the Giza Pyramid Plateau, and he was the first Minister of Antiquities for Egypt. And while this certainly is not an official title, he's also been my wife's favorite Egyptologist for decades. Along the way, he's been in countless documentaries, TV shows, and written and co-written over three dozen books on Egyptology. As you can probably imagine, he's a very busy guy, but he was gracious enough to carve out some time to chat with me for a few minutes. Before we chat with Dr. Hawass, though, we need to set up our game, Two Truths and a Lie. Here's how it works. I'm about to give you three facts. Two of those facts are true, and one of them is an all-out lie. Your task throughout this episode is to find out which one is the lie. Are you ready? Okay, here they are. Number one, Cleopatra and Ptolemy were not brother and sister. Number two, Cleopatra wanted to rule more than just Egypt. She wanted to rule the world. Number three, we don't know a lot about the real Cleopatra. Got them? Okay, now as you're listening to our story today, your challenge is to find the two facts scattered somewhere throughout the episode. And then by a simple process of elimination, you'll be able to find out which one is the lie. And of course, we'll do a recap at the end of the episode to see how well you did. All right, let's get Dr. Zahi Hawass on the line to chat about the historical accuracy of the 1963 movie, Cleopatra. I'd like to start by kind of setting up how the movie Cleopatra, the 1963 movie, explains things. And it kind of follows from Julius Caesar visiting Egypt, and he finds that Ptolemy is on the throne. But then his sister, Cleopatra, has fled Alexandria because there's some sort of animosity between them. And there's one line in particular that uh, Caesar says in the movie, he says, As we all know, when the father of Ptolemy and Cleopatra died, he named the two of them to rule jointly over Egypt. So with this setup, Dr. Hawass, can you explain a bit about who Ptolemy and Cleopatra were from a historical perspective? Were they really brother and sister that had some sort of animosity over that? They were brother and sisters, but the major problem about the movie actually uh, that most of our understanding about Cleopatra, it's a speculation because uh, Shakespeare did write something and actually people began to create stories about her. We may actually, from the historical point of view, we know, we know very, very little about her. But the fact that her father appointed her and her brother to be the kings of Egypt is true because in ancient Egypt, and you know, the, uh, the Ptolemaic became Egyptianized. They did exactly like what the ancient Egyptian did. And therefore, in ancient Egypt, the pharaoh has to be a man. The pharaoh cannot be a woman. But the pharaoh cannot be, the, the pharaoh cannot be a pharaoh without the support of women. 
And therefore, the father knew uh, that Cleopatra cannot be a pharaoh by herself. This is why he had to appoint his other son that is not capable of ruling. But with the support of Cleopatra, the two of them can rule the country. Then it's really true. This part is true. But the part about the carpet when she meets Caesar and and the death of Cleopatra and all of this are really speculation because people think that she was in love with Caesar and uh, and Mark Antony. But I really think that she was in love with them for her own sake. She wanted really to rule the world, and therefore she thought that the most important two leaders who really can help her is Mark Antony and Caesar. And I will give you one example. When Mark Antony was defeated on the Octium battle, she wanted to get rid of him, and she wanted to go back to Octavius. Maybe he would be the third lover to help her. But Octavius, and this is why she sent the message to Mark Antony that she died. And Mark Antony, uh, people believe that he did kill himself. And therefore, we don't really know how she died. This idea about the cobra, it's just moving. Uh, Shakespeare, it has no basic truth at all. And this is why, I, we, you know, we have been excavating uh, for the last 12 years in cooperation with Kathleen Martinez from the Dominican Republic inside a temple called Tabuziris Magna. And this temple located about uh, 30 miles west of Alexandria. And this temple was built by Ptolemy number four for the goddess Isis. Then we thought that maybe the idea that Kiribatra built the palace and next door to the palace a tomb, it's true but we have no evidence that she was buried in this tomb. And no one really ever searched for her tomb. And we, we thought that this is a perfect place, but we have been excavating for the last 12 years. We found coins, we found Cleopatra, statues of Cleopatra, but nothing that we discovered that can tell us about her life. She was an intelligent woman. She spoke many languages. She studied in a time that women cannot study in the school in Alexandria. And therefore, I really think that most of the information that has been written in this movie, Cleopatra, was mainly drama. And you can't really accuse drama for facts. No, drama is drama. And therefore, the movie was made in a way to fit uh, the historical background without having evidence such as text or archaeology discovery. Were there any other uh, women who ruled like Cleopatra? We have, of course, we have Queen Hatshepsut. She ruled for 22 years. She was a very powerful. And we have other three queens, but they ruled in a time of, the, of an intermediate period. They did not rule in a strong period. The only one that can, uh, we can say a woman as a strong ruler was Hatshepsut. In relation to Cleopatra, kind of set the, the timeline there. Where was she at? No, Hatshepsut lived in 1550 BC. Cleopatra ruled in 300 BC, in, uh, in 30 BC. And therefore, there is 2,000 years at least between them. Quite, quite, a, quite a bit of time. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned the uh, school of Alexandria there, and there is a moment in the movie where they talk about the, the burning of the Library of Alexandria. And according to the movie, it's Caesar who is actually burning the Egyptian fleet so he can control the harbor. But it doesn't really talk, it doesn't really focus on that much. Can you share a bit of the history about the Library of Alexandria? You know, the Library of Alexandria, of course, uh, it was uh, built in a beautiful way. And uh, the Ptolemaic 
began to take books from all over the world. It, it was the most important library in the world. But who really burned the library? There is many theories. People say that the Arabs, when the Arabs came, they did that. But we don't really know. People say that the Jews did that, but we don't really know. So actually, it's very difficult to understand really who did burn the Library of Alexandria. No evidence at all that Caesar did it. And therefore, it's still, it's a theory about that. But that is an actual theory that he may have done that, even though we don't really know for sure. We, 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 we don't have any proof that's done. Because most of the people said that uh, the Arabs, when they entered Egypt, they did that. Others said the Jews, as I told you. People said that Caesar. I really don't think that a man who's really intellectual like Caesar, he really could burn a great library like this. Now, you, you talked earlier about uh, Cleopatra and kind of using uh, Caesar and Mark Antony as for lack of a better term, like a stepping stone, almost like for the political power that she saw in order so that she could rule the world. Um, Do you think that that was something that was because um, not being able to be Pharaoh by herself, like she she thought that she needed that support? It could be. It could be. But, you know, uh, the reason that she wanted to go in the armies of Caesar is to get power. And, And therefore, she wanted the power not only to rule Egypt, but after that, she thought that she can rule the world. But we do, I don't really think that this lady, Kiribatra, was in love with any one of them at all. Just using them for their political power and their, their armies and such. Exactly. She was a very smart lady. She was very powerful in mind. And that's why she thought that the, the, the two people, uh, like Caesar and Mark Antony, could be the ones who helped her. Octavius did not want to have anything to do with her because he promised the people in Rome that he will bring her as a prisoner. It was his dream, really, to to take her as a prisoner. And this is why people created the idea of the cobra. The cobra does not exist at all. On that note, you mentioned that that was, you know, with Shakespeare, and there's a lot of the, the stories there. Even though we may not know exactly what, can you tell as what we do know the best that kind of that story of what happened to Cleopatra at the end? I, we really don't know. As an archaeologist, I cannot have, I do not have any historical evidence at all to tell us how she died. Is that an uncommon thing for, for somebody in a position of power like her to just not know what happened? Because, you know, in that time, uh, nothing really is written. And this is why the idea that many people began to make a speculation because Octavius wanted to have her as a prisoner, then when she failed to make him to be in love with her, she killed herself. This is what we think, but we don't know for fact. Then if the, if it, but again, I want to tell you that anyone who makes a movie, he has the right to make drama. He has the right to change history because this is drama then you can't really criticize, you know, all the films that has been made about Egypt. I always, when I began to approve them, I always say that the film director should write at the beginning that this movie has nothing to do with historical events. It is a story from the mind of the writer. And let them to do what they want then you cannot really criticize Kiribatra as a movie. It's a movie. It's not documentary. Are there, so with that movie in particular coming out in the 1960s, are there any new discoveries that we've learned about Cleopatra since then? Nothing. Nothing at all, huh? Nothing. Oh, wow. Nothing. They talked about this movie now, and people think that Beyonce should be the best for that, and I do not think that Kiribatra was Greek. She was not uh, uh, African uh, at all. You cannot have Beyonce as the queen. And I really, people asked me, and I said, Angelina, Angelina Jolie should be the best for that, for, for this role as Kiribatra. Hmm. Then, but there is no historical evidence came about this queen after the movie was made. 
with the Romans there in power, do you think that maybe some of it could have been erased on purpose? Like there's there was history, but there but it was lost or maybe lost in the in the library. I don't. I really do not. I really do not think so. The loss of the Library of Alexandria and most of ancient Alexandria was gone under the ground, and they and there is modern city built above that, and this is why the documents about her life should be buried somewhere uh, inside a tomb or inside. Uh, but mainly, maybe the Library of Alexandria uh, uh, did have something. We really don't know. Then I really think that the, because Alexandria was buried under the ground, as still today, you know, most of the archaeological discoveries that happening in Alexandria came by accident. Oh, really? Completely, completely. I, uh, it was found recently a big, large sarcophagus underneath one of the houses, and the people all over the world thought that this could be the tomb of Alexander the Great. It was not Alexander the Great. But what I want to say that. Maybe the historical uh, evidence about Cleopatra is still buried somewhere under modern Alexandria. I guess we'll just have to have to keep looking for it and hope that we can learn more. Exactly. Yes. So before we wrap up, there is one thing that I like to do on this podcast, and it's kind of giving a starting point. So if somebody is is listening to this and they they want to learn more and they want to dig into some of the true story, some of the history behind it. I, I know you have an impressive career filled with tons of great resources that will help people learn. And this kind of has to do with your work. If Where would you recommend somebody begin? Where would you recommend that they start learning more? You know, I think the best thing, I wrote a catalog uh, for, for an exhibit about Cleopatra, published by the National Graphic. In this catalog, it is really the best source about people who want to know about this queen. I introduced in this book, it's called Cleopatra, the Magical Queen. In this book, everything that we know about her. There's really nothing, nothing since then. <laughs> but hopefully we'll get an updated version once we learn more. <laughs> I always say that you, you never know what the sand of Egypt might hide of secrets. Still. There is many secrets to be discovered in Alexandria that you can know a lot about this queen. Do we do we know much about the the rulers before and after her? It's just that time period, or is it mostly just her? We know, no, we know, we know, we know about the history of the old the Egypt for three hundred years. We have many important information about the rule, and but the idea because of the collapse of the Ptolemaic dynasty under Cleopatra, that was really the period when it came, her father was a really strong ruler, and this period maybe the struggle between her and her brother could cause the idea of, uh, of the, uh, uh, that there is no historical uh, documents. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Haas. I really, really appreciate it. Again, it's, it's been an honor. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Is there any website or anything you'd like to, to plug for people to learn more about what you do? My website, drhawaz.com. Thanks again so much to Dr. Zahi Hawass for taking the time to chat about the true story of Cleopatra with us. If you want to learn more about the real Cleopatra, make sure to check out Dr. Hawass's book that is the National Geographic's official companion for the exhibition called Cleopatra, The Search for the Last Queen of Egypt. And of course, you can learn more about Dr. Hawass's work on his website over at drhawass.com. That is D-R-H-A-W-A-S-S dot com. I'll make sure to put a link to that and Dr. Hawass's website in the show notes for this episode over at baseonatruestorypodcast.com. Okay, now it's time for the answer to our two truths and a lie game from the beginning of the episode. As a refresher, here are the two truths and one lie. Number one, Cleopatra and Ptolemy were not brother and sister. Number two, Cleopatra wanted to rule more than just Egypt. She wanted to rule the world. Number three, we do not know a lot 
about the real Cleopatra. Did you find out which one is a lie? Let's start with number three. That is true. As Dr. Hawass pointed out, even though there have been a lot of stories told about Cleopatra over the centuries, the truth is that we just don't know a lot about the real her. For that reason, most of the movies and plays about her life are, well, all made up. That brings us to number two. That is also true. Dr. Hawass mentioned that it's not likely Cleopatra wanted to stop her power at the Egyptian borders, but she wanted to rule the whole world. So that means the lie is number one. As Dr. Hawass explained, the movie was correct in showing that Cleopatra and Ptolemy were brother and sister, and their father did appoint them as co-rulers because he knew that, at that time, a woman could not be a ruler on her own. That brings us to an end of this episode. Until next time, thanks so much for listening, and I'll chat with you again really soon.